Give to Barrett. Cut back over the middle of the 25 to the 20. Breaks a tackle to the 15. Stop, starts 10 5. Touchdown, Lions. Holy mackerel. Throws end zone. It is caught. What a play back there in the back of the end zone by TJ Hawkinson. You're listening to the One Pride Cast. Welcome into another One Pride Cast. Team reporter Danny Rogers here with you. And so is DetroitLions.com writer Mike O'Hara. First off, we're going to we're gonna quickly recap the Detroit Lions at Chicago Bears game. Oof. Oof is right. You already want to say something, yeah. Well, just here's another thing. When you think I'm making a pick on it and you don't agree with me, just clamp your hands over my mouth so I can't talk. I will. Okay? You have permission. Oh, I do. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh. Like 24, 14, or 23, 13, I think I said. We both did that. Yeah, I had the right. I had the right thing. I mean, it was 24-14, 23-13. Yeah, just had the wrong teams. We really did. That's think. a minor detail. I know. We really did think the. Lions I think our were friends at MGM out. would pay us off anyway, don't you think? I cannot be paid off anything. Let's be clear, Mike. But yes, you, <laughs> you can be paid off. Let's no, get I that can't. Straight. Okay, Lions. <laughs> I can try. <laughs> I, I, I would love that for you. Lions fall on the road at Chicago, 24 to 14. I mean, it should. It looked like a game that the Lions could finally get. A, d- a dub in the wing column. Yeah, I agree with you. I really do, and I don't think, I don't think they got steamrolled or anything by mm-hmm. the, by the Bears. They took advantage of some plays and, and made them. The Lions did not take advantage of some plays and make them. And I, I, it's probably sort of been the, you know, for the first quarter of this season, that's probably been the, the underlying factor which has hurt the Detroit Lions. Mm-hmm. Okay, Lions. Let's let's start with the Lions defense. Past defense didn't do awful. Limited Justin Fields, who we weren't sure he was going to get the start, but Justin Fields is now named the quarterback <laughs> after playing the Detroit Lions. Justin Fields got the start against Detroit. And uh, passer rating below 85. Okay, no touchdowns. Um, held to 209 yards in the air. The rush defense, uh, they allowed David Montgomery to, to, you know, explode for over 100 yards on the ground. What do you make of this Lions defense now that, spoiler alert, Outside linebacker Romeo Okora was injured in that game. He's done for the year with a torn Achilles. Yeah, done for the year, and that's a big loss too because mm-hmm. he's really a good player. And he not only does he play well, but he plays hard, and, he, and, he, and he's got stamina, durability, smart, all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, exactly the kind of player you want on, on, on any roster, I would think. Uh, it's it's going to be tough, right? It was tough already. And you look at the injury report, both offensively and defensively, going into Ugh. the. Now we could be surprised by Sunday. By the, by the time they get there to play the Vikings on Sunday, of who plays, because it, the guys can improve throughout the week, but it just it doesn't look good. It really no. doesn't. No, I mean you're touching on it. That injury report. Um, Frank Ragnow also was put uh, on IR after Chicago with a toe injury. Detroit Lions best player, really, and, and really yeah, he's yeah. he's going to be a many years All Pro center, he and will. who knows what that leads to, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Ragnow, he is out. Um, for at least three weeks. We don't know when the uh, Lions will get him back. Plus, another dagger to that offensive line, Panay Sewell, who was already filling in for left tackle Taylor Decker, who is, we still don't know a time to go on him <laughs> right. to return from IR. But uh, offensive coordinator Anthony Lynn says there is a chance they do not have Panay Sunday. But we just, the offensive line was supposed to be the best unit this season. Well, it, it's just one thing here. At, at, uh, we saw Penny Sewell on the practice field Thursday, no? We'll see what that means going forward. Mm-hmm. You're right about that. It was supposed to be the best unit on this team, and that. But what's what's probably most disappointing of anything with th- this season with the Detroit Lions, other than the 0-4 start, the record mm-hmm. itself, is the fact that they haven't had their offensive line on the field together for a single snap. Right. You know, uh, Taylor Decker gets hurt in practice the week of the first game. Mm-hmm. Gone. He hasn't played again. But other guys have gotten hurt now too. And and Frank Ragnow, what a blow that is. Yep. I mean, really, like, I don't want to keep, I don't want to berate this, but he really is. He's the, he's the Lions' best player. The center position is vital. Nothing moves until the center moves the ball. Correct. That's just the way it is. It's the basic play in, in football at any level. Mm-hmm. And now they don't have him. It's not just that they don't have their center. They don't have one of the best in the league who can really dominate the interior. Right. So now you have Evan Brown, who is stepping in. He's had game reps, and he's had game reps against Minnesota, um, who the Lions will be playing here next. Uh, but how, how difficult... Is it to fill in for that center spot? Especially, like you're saying, Frank Ragnow is the best player on this team. Oh, it's sort of like, look, we don't have George Harrison today. Would you just play a few songs? <laughs> My sweet lord for me, please. Seven, yes. Something like that. I'll do, yeah. 
Uh, it's tough. It really is. Now, look, he's he's one thing about him. He's been around since mm-hmm. he made the Giants roster in 19. I'm sorry, the 19. <laughs> my era. So in 20, uh, 2018, he made the roster, made the full as an undrafted free agent out of SMU, mm-hmm. and since then he's been with Miami. Uh, the Browns, and now Detroit late last year and got some playing time in the last game of the season mm-hmm. against these Vikings. But as I recall, that was at guard, not center. It's mm-hmm. an entirely different thing at center. Yeah. It's like it's like Evan said, uh, to, uh, speaking to the media this week, the center is a mentally heavy position, mm-hmm. and you make a lot of calls and all that. And I guess you can shuffle some of those off to the guards and, and, and so on, but it's not the same. No. It really isn't. You want... You want your main man at the main position to be the main man at the main position. Mm-hmm. It's the way it is, and you work in concert with you know with the with the quarterback, uh, Jared Goff. So any way you look at it, it, it's a blow to the Detroit Lions. And look, but you've seen you know teams make adjustments. They you know they they do things to make up for the loss of players. Look, I saw the Lions go on a playoff run once years ago without Barry Sanders for the last five games, and they won a division and made the playoffs. So things can happen. But this is not that team. No. Let me just say that. Yeah. But like I'm saying, things can happen, and, and, and players will surprise you. And maybe this is the start of Evan Brown's career. Now, it's not going to be a center for the Detroit Lions. Mm-hmm. That's Frank's job when he comes back. But it could be something. It could be. So Evan Brown's stepping up into that center position. You already had Matt Nelson stepping up into the right tackle position. Right. Who steps up into the left tackle position <laughs> if Panay Sewell, Sewell cannot go Sunday? Well, you can make history, okay? How about that? Yeah, let me that? step Put me in, coach. Let's do this. You know, I'm not even going to wear a helmet. I they want him to see my smile. <laughs> right? When I'm, when, yeah, when I'm, I'm beating him down. No, but uh, it's, it's, yeah, that's a good question, and I don't, I really, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think it's encouraging that, that Penny Sewell uh, worked at some degree on, on, on Thursday when to we saw To what degree him. exactly are we talking? Well, he was on the practice field okay. with the guys, you know, mm-hmm. and. Uh, Dressed fully. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. He was doing what they were doing. Of course, now we just see the beginning where they're warming up and stuff like that. Right. So, it's like Tim Twentyman said. That's a good sign. It's a really great sign. And when Tim says it, I believe it. I believe it too. And you know, um, someone I saw walking off the practice field in street clothes Wednesday was tight end T.J. Hawkinson. Any update on him? He was back on the field today. Okay. That's a good sign. Yeah. Maybe he didn't like the way he looked. (laughs) Maybe he was. I don't like how I look in my uniform today. I'm just going to... Yeah, I'm going to take the day. I just want to be comfy today. Yeah, well, I don't... No. Sounds good. No, no. no. Nice try. He, yeah, he is He is working through something, um, but that's a very good sign that both of it those is. guys were back out there. And, you know, one thing about Penny Sewell, I think we're I think we're forgetting some things about him or just kind of glossing over. First of all, the kid's 20 years old. 20. But that's, you know, but, but I think when you're 20, not only are you... I don't think you're mentally mature... Or not, I'm sorry, physically mature at all. I mean, his body is going to grow mm-hmm. and, and develop and all that. He's playing. He's played four games already without playing football for a year and a half. Right. And but he, he's not yet the player he's going to be, which I think is going to be a very, very, very good player. But I think we have to cut him some slack because, like I said, he's a 20-year-old kid oh, yeah. who's just getting back to football. Mm-hmm. I mean, and when you say that, he might not be completely mature physically. Yeah. In his mind, as a 20-year-old starting your rookie season, I feel like you're just you're going to have to. If he's injured and he thinks he can go, you're going to have to tie him down to the sideline and make sure he doesn't run out there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'd agree with that. I couldn't go in. I'd like to put it quite as eloquently as mm-hmm. you did, but yeah, I, I agree with you. But look, guys want to play and let yeah. them play. That's what, you know, look, you get 17 shots at it. Mm-hmm. All the stuff they go through, you know, the offseason workouts yep. and the practice and the monotony and all that, the play. pounding they take, yeah. get out there and play. Yeah, okay. Players play. Fighters fight. Players play. Okay. That's a good, I like that, Mike. Um, Lions will be taking on the Vikings. They have gotten off to not a great start in uh, under this Mike Zimmer team. One and three. Uh, they did not do well against the Browns last season, last week. You know, just for you. Yeah, I, you'd like to say something. I, I put some notes together. Let really. me see I did, them. I did a little bit of research on this. Read them on off. A little research. Look, they lose their first two games. Uh, and look, they're t- tough games. I th- they lost them by a combined four points. Right. Then they come back and they beat Seattle 30-17. They start last uh, last Sunday against against the Browns and mm-hmm. they go 75 yards on 14 plays with their first possession. And that's it. They don't get a sniff the rest of the no. game. And that's sort of been you know when I listen to to uh, Mike Zimmer, the head coach, mm-hmm. I listen to his uh, Monday press conference, and uh, as I wrote on on my scouting report on on the, on the Vikings, 
It sounded like the echoes of Dan Campbell earlier in the day. 60 minutes of football. It sounded like the same thing. Didn't have consistency, Mm -hmm. couldn't sustain drives, things like that. Look, they've had periods where they've only scored field goals in in, in in consecutive, three consecutive quarters. At least they're scoring field goals. Yeah, we'll take field goals, won't we? We'll take field goals, please. Unless they're 66-yard field goals against us. Well, we would like to kick 66-yard field goals. I'd rather have two 33-yarders. Say less. <laughs> but all I'm saying, let's kick some field goals. That's all I'll say. But, you know, they've, they've got some issues, too. They're quite, you know, look, Kirk Cousins has been, like, a good quarterback. Yep. Not great. Mm-hmm. Good. You know, he's six years with, with Washington, four years now yep. with with the, the Minnesota Vikings. And I think people are still trying to figure him out. Is he is, is there another level to his game? I think he is what he is. And that's mm-hmm. kind of have some good games, some average games some not so good games. I don't think he's ever terrible, but sometimes sometimes the pressure gets to him it looks like. Sometimes the big the big moment gets to him it looks mm-hmm. like. And other times when they meet when they beat the, the Saints in the playoffs, the big moment didn't get to him. Right. So I just think there's a little bit of undependability there in in Kirk Cousins. And I don't think he's, he's obviously he's not the greatest athlete at that at mm-hmm. qu- the quarterback position in an era when I think some things you do you look at athleticism first. When you're getting a quarterback, look at some of it from Joe Burrow to mm. a Lamar Jackson, guys like that. It's it, they're just absolutely great athletes, right. and then they're quarterbacks. Right. I think Kirk Cousins still trying to figure out his pass protection, protection, and that offensive line. Um, only they were only able to put up 65 rushing yards yeah. last weekend. That's not good for so him. I think offensive line is still trying to figure out pass protection, um, opening some gaps for that run game. Uh, can. Can this Detroit defense bounce back after a loss with Romeo Cora against a Kirk Cousins and Dalvin Cook offense? Yeah, and don't forget uh, Thielen and Adam and, Thielen. I, and Dan Justin, Campbell does not want anyone to forget about Adam Th- Thielen. And, he said he is not forgetting about and him. Justin Jefferson, yep. the kid from LSU, first round draft pick, was the offensive rookie of the year last year. Mm-hmm. But you know, but they haven't put it together. They, right. you know, they, they, you know, they, they, you know, they scored some points here and there. But they just mm-hmm. the fact they they were talking about that. The, the, the Kirk Cousins was talking about that, in his uh, talking to the media this week. So, you know, there's a reason teams are inconsistent. But the one thing that the, that the the Vikings have going for them now is that they're back to what they were. That what's really been the calling card of, of uh, Mike Zimmer, the head coach, going back to when he was a position coach, uh, Danny, yep. and then an offense a defensive coordinator. He puts together a defense, defense. and when they're healthy, they're Mm -hmm. really, really good, and they can really disrupt you. Um, Look, I don't want to bore you with statistics, but I'll give you a a couple here that I think sort of, sort of sum up the last two, three years of of the Minnesota Vikings. They gave up 475 points last year, and they only had 23 sacks, and they finished seven and nine. The year before, they were 10 and six, made the playoffs, and they gave up 303 points, wow. and they had 48 sacks. Now, wow. that's a 25-sack differential yep. and 172 points, which is about, in a 16-game season, which we're now have 17, lot. is about 11 points yep. a game. And th- they were just absolutely stripped out. Uh, Danielle, Dan, I'm sorry, Danielle. Danielle Hunter. No relation. My name's Danielle. I know. Can I call you Danielle? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call you Hunter. <laughs> okay, great. Either no, one. but but Danielle Hunter is just a terrific player. He plays. Yep. He, he can convert pass rusher to run defender. Mm-hmm. Can you hear that? Boom. That was a snap of the fingers, and he really can. I'm not just saying that. He he had 14 and a half sacks in in uh, in in 2019 when they had you know made the playoffs and had a good team. Last year he missed the entire season, and boy did they miss mm-hmm. him, and a lot of other guys too that weren't weren't there. Uh, it's. I just think that I just think we, they used to call Zimmer's defense. Every defense has got a name if it works. They call Ooh. it the mug defense. The mug defense. And you get up there on the line of scrimmage, just mug everybody. Oh man! But it's 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 when when he, he when his defense is going, they're really good. They yeah. really are. And I think they have a chance to be going. Yeah, I think they're starting to go. And uh, any chance the Lions see a breakout Vikings defense? I don't. Well, especially with. The injuries to this I, offense. I, I don't think you can count on it because they haven't broken out against anybody really yet. Now okay. they've had dribs and drabs, mm-hmm. you know. But you got to, if you're going to win anything, you've got to put it together. If you're going to yep. pull an upset, you absolutely have to pull it together. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe their best, maybe their best approach this week is to is to run the ball and, and protect the quarterback as much as they can. Look, there was a game four, five, six years ago when they sacked Matthew Stafford ten times, and I think. Man, are you really going to bring that up? He's he can't hear us. He's in California. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't hurt anymore. <laughs> And and uh, play it on Thursday ten night, sacks, by the I feel way. Like that still hurts. Yeah, ten sacks, and I think he was hit eight more times or nine more wow. times, something like that. 
and he was fine after the game. Well, you know him. That's, yeah, that's him. You got to yank you know, him off the field. You missed me, you know. I know. Yeah. And but but I they're they're back to that level. I don't think they'll get ten sacks or anything like that. But given the injuries, given the the remanipulation or whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it of the offensive line, I don't even think remanipulation is a word. It by the be. way, we'll look it up some other we day. We need producer PJ to look it up. But uh, but it's it's going to be it's a tough go. It really yeah. is. Yeah. I mean, to me, if the Lions want to win this game. I mean, they had no problem moving the chains against Chicago. None. The issue was putting the ball <laughs> in the end zone. Lions one for five in the red, zo- red zone when they made it there. Yes, you know, you know, what, you know what, what's really strange is that they were good at it before before Sunday in Chicago. Like, I think what, they, what the heck happened? What, they were six for six or something like that? I'm going to have to look that up. Another yeah. PJ question. But when they min- made it to the red zone in Chicago – Four time they did not get it done. Two turnovers and two failed fourth down yeah, attempts. Right. Okay. All right. Here's the thing. Here's my question. Oh, boy. I'm embraced. <sighs> yeah. Brace yourself. Can I just say the, no to start out? And yeah, yeah just me? say no, and then we'll just argue. Okay. No, go ahead. Yeah, so a couple of, of failed fourth down attempts in the red zone. These yeah. Lions only lose by 10 points. Okay? Yeah. Four red four red zone trips. Yeah. No points. I mean, if if let's just say... You know, for giggles, they kicked field goals those four times. That's 12 points. Lions win. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to, you know, well, really dive deep into there? I think I <laughs> – It's tough. This is tough because – I'm t- tongue-tied. <laughs> I know. We've heard head coach Dan Campbell's – all the favor – it was in his favor to go for it on those fourth downs. In the red zone. Look, I, it, the, the two they went to on, on the five-yard line yep. and, then, and then later in the game, I mm-hmm. think it was on the nine-yard line or yep. eight-yard line. I mean, that play was there. I would, have, I would have kicked the field goal the second time. Okay. I really would have. Yep. Uh, the other one, it didn't really bother me from the five-yard yep. line. It's early in the game. You're moving the ball. I agree. You know, you really, you've got them. You know, if you don't get it, okay, we'll get it next time. Yep. You know, basically. Uh, so that, that that didn't bother me as much now. But when it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. When it, if it doesn't work, it's wrong. That's mm-hmm. just the way it is. Interesting. Uh, but but the second one, fourth and one, having said that, they had two guys open and uh, just wasn't, weren't able to connect. Execution. I know execution is such a big one going into this game as well, like, as, well as c- playing 60 minutes. Yeah. Like, can they, like, let's go. Let's see if they can get it done. You know what killed me the most, though, after that, when they take over, they've got a punt on fourth down, lined up offside. How do you do that? That's a great question. Lined up offside. Not only that, they called timeout before they punted, Mm -hmm. and the player was lined up offside before the timeout. Yeah. When he came out and did it again, he lined up offside again. (sighs) Now, come on. Yeah, just toss the hat. (laughs) What? I know. I mean, (laughs) reflex action. I know, I know. We'll, we'll get through this, though. Mind numbing. I know. We'll, and I have we'll, a numb mind to begin. I'm a numb skull to begin with. Correct. I know. I know. Well, thank we'll get you. through this. Thanks for agreeing with me. Uh, so the Lions going into this one, yeah, uh, could be down some key players. Yeah. We'll, we'll uh, continue to keep you updated. Everyone update as to their status. Mo- mainly probably will be questionable yeah. going into Sunday. We, we probably won't know until game time decision. Um, but any other any other takes before we get to your bet MGM uh, pick. Let's just go to the pick. All right. Give us your pick, your score prediction. Who you got? You know, I'd like to make it a close game. The line started out at seven, seven and a half, eight, something like that. Mm-hmm. Middle of the week, it was nine and a half. Mm-hmm. I could see it in double figures. Yeah, I agree. Now, it depends on who comes back, too, mm-hmm. but they're not all coming back. No. They're not walking on water. And, you know, they're they're not. Trey Flowers might come back. We have. Well, we he have practiced today, today and he was hey. doing, he was, he was, he was practicing Thursday and he was going to do the interview so that usually is a sign a guy's yeah, going to play. that's a great play. sign. Outside linebacker now that yeah. Romeo Cor is out. Yeah, they they need him. He's been so need missed so many him. games because of injury. Yep. It just it's just to me that it sometimes it's just a matchup and I've used this phrase before it's a point in time and at this point in time I think the Vikings really see a pathway to making the playoffs. The Lions are just a just try to win a game, and it's it's a little different. In fact, mm-hmm. it's a lot different. I like the Vikings. I really do. I like yep. them like 31-17. That's a lot of points. That's a lot of points, That's 31-17. Lot of points. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Are you, though? Are you mm-hmm. really sorry? I'm heartless. You are, Mike. I'm cold. You truly are. I mean, okay. We'll see. 31-17 to 17 is Mike's pick as the Lions head to Minneapolis Hold this it. Sunday. I can hear people running down to the MGM right um, now. They're, they're <laughs> put, put your bets in, people. Put your bets in. Mike's, Mike's stone hard colded. Um, 
Stone cold hearted? Yeah, stone cold. Well, I like stone hard colded. Yeah, that made yeah. a lot of sense. <laughs> I'm going to stop because you're you just, gotta get a job you're in rattling me now. That's I why know. I'm here. I know, you're rattling me I'm now. I'm like a snake. Oh my god. <laughs> my oh, right. You need to end off. this. I can't pull him off the podcast ever. Okay. Thank you, Mike, for joining me. Uh, we are not done yet. Wide receiver Khalif Raymond is joining me next. He had two big touchdowns in that game against Chicago. He only had three receptions on the day. We talked about who he gave his game ball to, both of his game balls to, and uh, what this team can do to get a dub against Minnesota. That's coming up after this. Rory's Cub Club registration is back open for the 2021 season. Get your children in the official Detroit Lions fan club for kids up to age 14. Each Cub Club registration comes with a membership kit filled with one-of-a-kind Detroit Lions items, plus exclusive events and ticket discounts. Visit DetroitLions.com slash Cub Club to sign up now. Your, your last touchdown in the league, 2019 mm. postseason, 45-yarder. Yeah. We won't forget about it. Uh -huh. um, so to have your number called for those big receptions against mm. Chicago, how much are you seeing your game develop here uh, this season? I think that's exactly what it is. Um, there's a lot of things that I train in and out in the off season, and um, it's just now I'm getting an opportunity just where I am with the staff, with the organization here. Um, let me go out there and use the things in my toolbox that I've been that I've been working on. So um, it means a lot, especially for them to call your number and to capitalize. I say it all the time. There's, there's only one ball on the field, so um, it means a lot every single time that the decision's made for that ball to come to you. Um, that's like you got the team on your back, the organization on your back. With that one ball, there's only one, so it means a lot. Your toolbox now is helping you surpass almost your reception yards of all last season now mm -hmm. through week four. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of trust is being built up. How, mm -hmm. how did you build up that trust with this staff and, and your, your teammates? Um, I think it's just a matter of, uh, honestly, <laughs> grinding through camp. I mean, that's when every, I mean, everybody's got a fresh start, fresh phrase, fresh staff, everybody, and uh, just continually grinding every day. They always try to say is be consistent as you can and just continue to ascend. Um, as long as you get just a little bit better every day, um, eventually I trust the deal throughout the staff. So, uh, and it, honestly, it's still growing. It's, it's, uh, it's a lot of football ahead of us and uh, a lot more things we want to accomplish. So I'm just going to keep grinding as much as I can so that, that trust continues to build. But that trust isn't just in uh, calling the play, but, you know what I'm saying, just the trust between all the teammates and making sure the play is executed. So mm -hmm. yep. Your head coach, Dan Campbell, um, also trusts you to be one of the leaders on this team. He says mm -hmm. he doesn't allow any anchors to bring down the mental aspect mm -hmm. of these of this team and this organization, and mm -hmm. you're one of the people that help to bring it back up. Mm -hmm. What are you saying? What are you doing in the locker room and on the practice field that has coach saying that you're one of the people mm -hmm. helping to keep these spirits up? Uh, honestly, I, that's it's, it's an odd to be thought of it like that. Um, but honestly, I, I try to do the same thing. With my siblings, man, just just lead by example. Just go out there and, and work. Um, at the end of the day, like. The, the, the mental side of the game is the most important part of the game. So if I can come out there every single day, every single rep, and get everything I have, hopefully, I mean, that energy ends up being contagious. Um, and, and then there's other guys on the team that's doing the same thing, like uh, watching Steve, his, his energy every day, trying to get better. I'm on Rye, I have to practice every day, just grind. I mean, the energy is contagious. So um, just continue to do that. And uh, like I said, we got, a, we got a team that's built off grit. So um, just keep pushing and keep pushing and keep pushing, and eventually the work will pay itself off. So. You're going to need a lot of grit going up against yeah. the Minnesota defense. Yeah, absolutely. What's the biggest challenge that you're facing heading into Sunday? Um, I think the biggest challenge, honestly, is on ourselves. Um, just to be, continue to be detailed and um, and everything that we do. Um, we, I think, just from an exposure standpoint, we know we can go. We know we can get things done. But it's just being consistent and in details for 60 minutes. That's going to be our biggest challenge. And if we do that, we'll be all right. Mm -hmm. You're on the radar now of everyone. <laughs> How do you make sure that you're separating yourself so that you can come up with those big plays still? Uh, I'll just, just honestly keep going. Um, I think when uh, – you start to think too much about things and looking at the outside world and there's so much there's so much stuff going on but at the end of the day just come and just play football come here and just go and do your work every day and eventually <laughs> i think coach always says the cream always rises to the top but eventually the work will pay off um and just keep working don't never never uh, take a day off so show your lions pride by going authentic with gear from shop.detroitlions.com for a great selection of t-shirts, hats, jerseys, and novelties with convenient flat rate shipping right to your doorstep, visit shop.detroitlions.com, your 24-7 home for Lions gear. As always, a big, great thank you to Mike O'Hara for joining us from DetroitLions.com and making his bet MGM pick. Coming up next, 
hear from Jamal Williams of Jamal That Show. If you haven't tuned in yet, go to any of the Lion social media platforms. Jamal is a hoot. You do not want to miss it. Check out this excerpt from his latest episode. Oh. What it is, what it ain't, what it ain't, what it is. What's happening, y'all? Jay Boog is back. So apparently, people like what I got to say. And they already started giving out some uh, comments, some good positive views, you know what I mean? So I'm going to give a couple to see what they say. I imagine the prompt was, Jamal, can you go into this booth for five minutes and just start talking? Yes, that's exactly that's exactly what it is. It's just me just talking. I talk to myself all the time. Might as well put a camera in front of it and just see how I am. <laughs> I've been this way since I grew up, since I was a little shinobi. I've just played video games, went to school, played football. And that's why I love my peoples, because they love me, because they know I'm going to be me all the time. 100% J-Bug, not changing. Not even close. <laughs> and for the haters, too, that don't like the J-Bug, I'm sorry to say, this is how I am. So you going to be hating for life. <laughs> can, I give a, can I give a shout out real quick? Shout out to my boys, <clears throat> BYU. They doing their thing. Keep rocking, repping the Y. That's my boys right there. Hey, this is a bar. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> I need a J-Swag Daddy jersey. Like I need water. Mm. <laughs> That's not bad. I like that one. Can we get this version of Jersey, please? Swag Daddy Jersey. Slap it on the minute. Right now, please. <laughs> it says at Swag Daddy, but I'm gonna just start saying Jamal. To be honest, this is just Jamal in the mirror every every day, right? Pretty much. I gotta at least talk to myself. 25 minutes of positive energy to myself in the mirror. You know, it gets me ready to go in the morning and it makes me feel good when I go to sleep. Positivity all the time. Don't talk that negative stuff to yourself. You don't need none of that energy next to you. And my favorite thing to say, I promise you, is surpass your limits. Whenever you think you at your limit, you can go past it. Dig deep, burn in there. <laughs> and figure out the type of beast you is. Because everybody got that beast in them if you want it. You got to go get it, though. Go get it. <laughs> That's all I got. It's great seeing y'all again. Episode 2 is done. We still got more to go. <laughs> That's it for the One Pridecast this week. I'm Danny Rogers. Thanks so much for tuning in. A new episode drops every Friday.